He started out making live recordings of punk rock bands to play on his college radio show in London, Ontario, and wound up a Canadian music legend. Producer, engineer, and archivist Peter J. Moore died on Saturday at the age of 67. When a lost Joni Mitchell recording turned up, or when Rush wanted to bring a decades-old live album back to life, Mr. Moore got the call. And for good reason, he was a master, whose restoration of Bob Dylan and the band's basement tapes won him a Grammy. He worked with countless bands, big and small, over the years, but it was the Trinity Session by the band Cowboy Junkies that put him on the map. It was recorded using a single microphone in a Toronto church, and the 1988 album went on to sell well over a million copies. Michael Timmons is the songwriter and guitarist for Cowboy Junkies. We reached him in Toronto. Michael, I'm, I'm very sorry for your loss. Oh, thank you. Take us back. What, what made you first want to record with Peter J. Moore back when you were both relatively unknown? Yeah, we were, we were yeah, very unknown. We had, hadn't had a record yet. <laughs> and uh, Peter hadn't ever, I don't think, recorded an album. So we were, we were, both, we were both pretty uh, young and naive. Uh, we met Peter at a, um, at a party, uh, at, which was actually given by Greg, at Greg Keeler's loft at the time. And um, we got to talk to Peter and got to know him. And, and we discovered that he sort of had the same feeling that we had, that the music coming out of studios at that time was pretty boring and robbing the bands of their personality. And, and Peter was wanting to sort of pioneer a, a new way of recording, sort of getting almost a, a new old way of getting back to the, the uh, your classic uh, jazz recordings and of just of trying to capture performances. And um, that's exactly what we had been talking about doing in our studio, in our, in our rehearsal garage. It was like we just wanted to capture with a sound that we heard when we were in our garage. And and we knew that uh, if we went to a studio, first of all, we wouldn't have the money to do so and we wouldn't have the knowledge. So we said, decided to try to do some experimentation together. And that ended up being our first album, which was White South Press Now. And then that grew into doing the next record, which was the Trinity Session. So we just fortunately came together. And I mean, the idea behind the Trinity Session, it sounds so simple, right? You know, but yeah. to get something that sounds that good with a yeah. single microphone, I can't even, it must have been just painstaking work. Did, did yeah. you believe he could pull it off? Yeah, you know, we had this uh, uh, amazing belief in Peter. He, he just he just exuded confidence, right? He always did his entire life. That's, that's one thing he never lacked, was <laughs> confidence, confidence in his ability. And uh, rightfully so. Like, you know, uh, when it came down to sound and capturing sound and the physics of sound, like, Peter was a genius in that sense. Like, he, he just knew everything about it. And, you know, as we got to know him, we, we did our first record with him. We loved what he did in our tiny little muffled garage and then he came to us you know six months later and when we were ready to record again and said you know i've been i found this space at trinity church and i love the you know of course he didn't just say i love the reverb of it he talked about you know the dimensions of it and it's the dimensions of this right. church in this place and all that things up and we just sort of nodded blankly at him and said okay just tell us when to show up and we did and um took place in a, over the course of a day a very long 12-hour day but first six, seven hours of that day was Peter just moving us around the microphone in and out and then us playing and him going and listening back on his headphones and moving somebody else two feet here and moving another person, you know, one foot in towards it wow. until he, yeah, it was really, it was, you know, tr tr truly like he was mixing because it was just, you know, it was a single microphone, a stereo microphone, but there was no post-production on it. So, and, you know, and just hearing him, just using his ears, just using his ears and his knowledge of audio and his knowledge of sound waves and, and, um, and that's what he did. And then finally he said, you know, okay, we got it. Play. <laughs> and we, played for, we, we played for the next six hours. Just went through the songs like two or three times each and walked out of the church with a record and a career. <laughs> is, is it true? The, the, the legend is that it only costs like 250 bucks to make. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I think that's probably an exaggeration. It's probably too much money. Uh, we, uh, everybody was working on spec, including Peter, and um, we had to pay to rent the church, which was very minimal. And then we had to pay, I think we bribed the security guard 25 bucks to let us stick around for an extra two hours because uh, he wanted to close up and we weren't ready to close. And then we bought pizza for everybody. And that was, that was the budget. That was, that was, that was literally everything. <laughs> so yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty cheap. It was pretty cheap. Allow me to nerd out for a second here. Cause I, yeah. I, I played that cassette clear through, broke the tape and broke mm -hmm. my dad's cassette player in the car the whole bit. But when I listened and even now, when I listen to those recordings, I I'm struck by restraint uh, an, an almost mm -hmm. kind of hushed feeling and, and i feel like i've imposed that on peter moore 
Uh, was he like that as as a person, or am I just completely off base on that? <laughs> Hushed? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's about the opposite. Um, you know, Peter Peter just dealt with whatever was in front of him. He was he was a real pro at that. Like whatever you gave him, his 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 objective was to make it work, right? So that that was the amazing thing about peter he he never gave up right and uh so with 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 us um we we were hushed like that we were a very very quiet band and peter's idea was that you know i could take this this music coming out of this, these five six seven eight people and capture something here really special so it was just you know as i say peter you know heard something and then he his brain went into okay now how do i how do i make this work and that, that's that's what he did so yeah so and it was really us playing but he captured it you know which was really not easy at all he went on to do some amazing things with archival recordings of course mm -hmm. the the grammy winning release the, the the basement tapes by bob dylan and the band what did he tell you about that well it was amazing you know because i'd be in and out of the studio all the time and one day I walked into a studio to work on something I was working on. He said, okay, I'm going to play something, but you can't, you can't tell anybody this because I don't think he'd, he'd be given a gig yet. And he, he goes and he gets up this little quarter inch tape, like a literal box and he opens it up and puts it on his quarter inch tape machine. And there's Bob Dylan and, wow. <laughs> and Robbie and Garth and Levon <laughs> and, and, and it was you know, mind blowing. I said, like, "What? The, why is this?" And he said, "These are the basement tapes, like, like literally the basement wow. tapes." Quite, it's quite amazing. It was, and you know, he he just loved it. He just loved that type of project. That's really cool. Uh, before we say goodbye, is is there a song you worked on with Peter Moore that that we could play for you now? Uh, well, I, I was thinking that you know, the 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 Trinity session obviously is 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 our is our I think both of our masterworks and. Uh, you know, the legend is is that it was recorded in one day and that's kind of false in that there's the one song mining for gold which opens the record out and we had decided that we'll do it the very last thing because it's the easiest just margo singing by herself it's a cappella and you know we'll just leave it but by the end of the day after 12 hours we packed up and walked out of the church and as soon as the doors closed behind us we realized <laughs> that we had forgotten to record it so peter again you know you put a problem in front of him he's going to solve it. he said okay i'm in here next week with the some some of the Toronto Symphony doing some recording. So, Margot, I'm gonna I'm gonna call you on their union break, and you've got to get down here right away. So, sure enough, you know the next Monday or whatever, Margot gets a call, rushes down to the church. She walks in, and all these classical musicians are sitting around eating their sandwiches. And Peter says, "Okay, there, there's the mic. Sing. <laughs> you got one shot." And so she does it, and, and that that's that's the version. Wow. Well, we'll play that now. But thank you for that. Just great thank to get you. all these stories. Thanks a lot. We reached Cowboy Junkies guitarist Michael Timmons in Toronto. We are miners, hard rock miners, to the shaft house we must go. Pour your bottles on our shoulders, we are marching to slow on the line boys on the line boys drill your holes and stand in line till the shift boss comes to tell you you must drill her out on top can't you feel the Dust in your lungs, it'll cut down a miner when he is still young. Two years and the silicosis takes hold, and I feel like I'm dying from mining for gold. Yes, I feel like I'm dying from mining for gold. From the album The Trinity Session, produced by the late Peter J. Moore, Cowboy Junkies with Mining for Gold. We're going to take a short break.